happy Thursday. Welcome back to another Cook with Chris. It is the last Cook with Chris of the month and then next month we have a whole new batch of recipes. Today I'm going to be making one of my favorite recipes and this one is very special to me because this is actually the recipe that inspired me to want to become a chef. It is pasta carbonara. It, for those of you who don't know, pasta carbonara is a very simple and totally delicious pasta dish that features um, pancetta. A lot of people use bacon, but pancetta is a type of cured Italian pork. Um, it's kind of like um, kind of like thick prosciutto or thick bacon. Um, so I'm gonna use pancetta and a creamy sauce made from simply egg yolks. So I've got some eggs in here and Parmesan cheese. And then of course, we've got a little bit of garlic as well. I have the pasta pot cooking and this is all gonna come together very quickly. Um, but I think the thing about pasta carbonara that I just absolutely adore is that it is so simple. The ingredients are very few and it makes this really incredible sauce. There are a lot of recipes out there for pasta carbonara that add things like cream and special cheeses and all of these extra ingredients that are just totally not necessary. The very simple act of just learning how to put the egg yolks with the Parmesan cheese, cook up the pancetta, swirl in a little bit of garlic and get it all creamy together it makes a, an absolutely delicious pasta dish. So I have, like I said, my pasta pot is going. I'm gonna go check. I think that it is boiling. So I like to use spaghetti for this recipe. You could use any sort of pasta shape you want. I like some sort of a long pasta shape. So you could use a spaghetti, you could use an angel hair, you could use a fettuccine, a linguine, anything like that. That's what I prefer and that's, that's traditional is some sort of kind of long thin pasta for this one. Um, but the only other ingredients you'll need, like I mentioned a couple times, are some sort of either pancetta or bacon, works as well, but pancetta is traditional a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. This is freshly grated, which is what I always recommend. Yes, it does take a little bit of time to freshly grate it, but it's worth it because the recipe comes together so quickly anyway. You can afford to grate the Parmesan cheese. Two cloves of minced garlic and um, our pasta, of course. I'm using about 12 ounces of pasta. We need salt for the pasta water and that's about it, you guys. So simple. We're also gonna use some of the pasta water as well. So we're gonna have to make sure that we remember to reserve some of that pasta water. So let me go check on my water. Okay, we're almost there, not quite. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit, but let's talk about salting our pasta water because this is a big deal, you guys. I see so many people under salting their pasta water. We do not need to be afraid of salt, especially when it comes to pasta water, because you're not going to be actually eating all of that salt that you put in the pasta water. Yes, some of it is going to get absorbed, but a very small amount of it. And you want your pasta water to be, I guess, you know, what people will say is as salty as the sea. And you're not actually gonna taste your pasta water, but you wanna put a good amount of salt in. We are talking for a whole pot, we're talking like, Tablespoon-ish, probably more, about a handful. Now I'm making a mess over here, but that's okay. Counter's clean. <laughs> so you wanna put in a small handful of salt to your big pot of pasta water. You want it to be very salty because that's the only thing that is going to season your pasta. You need your pasta to be seasoned. Remember, we don't want our food salty. We want our food to be well seasoned. But the only thing that's going to season your pasta, pasta isn't typically made with salt. Um, it's typically just flour and water or flour, eggs and water, depending on what type of pasta you're using or what type of pasta you're making. So you want to salt your water really well. That's going to season the pasta. And then we're also going to save a little bit of that pasta water, meaning we don't actually, and we're also going to be using a salty pancetta. So we're not actually going to be um, seasoning our sauce. Our sauce is going to be seasoned simply by using the pasta water and the pancetta. Remember, simple is incredible. So, almost there. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna salt our pasta water and then while the pasta is cooking, we are gonna get the pancetta going. So for pancetta, for bacon, for any sort of, um, whoops, you know, plugging in my hot plate would make it easier to, to actually heat it up, huh? So, one day when I design my, my own home kitchen, right? <laughs> All right, so you want to start your bacon or pancetta in a cold pan always. I know this is a shocker to some people. Some people are like, well, yeah, duh, of course. But this is going to render the fat and it's gonna make the bacon or pancetta crispy. So I just turned it on. So I'm gonna add the pancetta to the pan. 
we're gonna get that cooking and we're going to cook it until the fat is rendered and it's nice and crispy. And then we are going to transfer it once it's cooked to a paper towel lined pan. So that's what we're gonna do to start while we're waiting for our pasta water to cook. We're gonna cook up our pasta and I will show you how we're gonna to put together the sauce ingredients. And I'm gonna tell you a story of how I decided to become a chef or how I was first inspired to become a chef. And it was all thanks to pasta carbonara. Maybe we'll start that now because I'm we're still waiting for the pasta water. I thought I had the timing down perfect, but that's okay. We're all good. Um, this pot is a little bit smaller and taller, so it takes a little bit longer to heat up. So I went to school for nutrition way back. Oh gosh, now I shouldn't even do the math. Like 13 years ago, I went to school, I was going to URI. I live in Rhode Island, for those of you who don't know, small estate. Um, and so I went to the University of Rhode Island and I'm going to school for nutrition. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life after going to school for nutrition. At this point in time, I had dealt with kind of some disordered, well, I definitely dealt with some disordered eating. And I knew that I didn't want to kind of give people out meal plans. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to go the dietetics route. I ended up doing sports nutrition instead. And so I was going to school for nutrition and I knew that I loved food and I knew that I loved health and I knew that I wanted to teach people about food and health through cooking but I wasn't sure how I wanted to do that so it's just something kind of always in the back of my head and then an opportunity came up in between my first and second year um, of school to study abroad in the south of Italy, in Calabria, in this little tiny town in the, in the south of Italy called San Demetrio Corone. Um, there's this family that hosts students from different schools every single year. Um, and so I got to go and spend six weeks and live in Italy and be kind of immersed in the culture. And one of the things that we had the opportunity to do when I lived in Italy, I was just taking Italian classes while I was there and getting school credits for it so it got me a little bit ahead which was kind of fun so one of the things that i got to do was i got to take a cooking class and there was this really sweet chef she's this tiny little thing and her name was rosa and she um she worked at this restaurant that we would go to every single night it was part of the program that i did making sure this is heating up. It was part of the program that I did in my study abroad program um, that we would go to the same restaurant every night for food, for dinner. <laughs> we would stay there for like hours because if any of you have ever been to dinner in Italy, it is an event. And she was the chef and she was this sweet chef. Like I said, she was a tiny little thing. She spoke very little English. So we had one of the heads of the program there kind of translating her, teaching us how to make pasta carbonara. And at the time I had been a vegetarian and I was like, I don't know if I want to eat this because it has ham in it and I haven't eaten ham in so many years. And you guys, I was so fascinated with this really simple process of her just putting together egg yolks and Parmesan cheese and this pancetta, this cured meat, that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try it. And I tried it and the simplicity and the just deliciousness <laughs> won me over and I was like, I wanna be Rosa. I wanna go to culinary school and I wanna learn how to teach people how to find more joy in food. We can still nourish our bodies and eat in a way that's healthy, but we can also find so much joy in the simplicity of food. And it was that day and learning how to cook pasta carbonara in the south of Italy with Rosa, our chef, who that really like inspired me to wanna to go to culinary school one day. But it wasn't for a couple years that I actually went to culinary school. When I met my current husband, not current husband, but when I'm, I've only had one, um, when I met my husband, who was my then boyfriend, um, he's Canadian, and I needed a reason to go up to Canada after school, and so I applied for culinary school, and that's how I ended up actually going to culinary school. But it was all because of that little tiny kitchen in the south of Italy, like 20 of us packed in this tiny little kitchen, learning how to make pasta carbonara. So this is a very special dish to me. Um, and so it's fun to be able to share it with all of you guys here as well. So we are just waiting for our pasta to boil, for our water to boil, and it's just there. It's just starting to bubble. Isn't it that a watch pot never boils, right? So now I'm watching the pot and it's not gonna boil on me. <laughs> And we are just starting to heat up our pancetta over here. I can start to smell it. For those of you who are just hopping on, um, my biggest recommendation when it comes to pancetta, when it comes to bacon, when it comes to anything you're trying to, um, any sort of meat that you're trying to render the fat from and you're trying to um, crisp it on any sort of, on the stove um, or even in the oven, 
in the oven, you're putting it in cold no matter what because it's cold going into the oven. Um, but you wanna start it in a cold pan. So I've started it in a cold pan and it is just starting to heat up. I'm gonna hear it start to sizzle. It's only gonna take a couple of minutes. And when that's done, and the pasta's cooked, it's all gonna come together very quickly. This is a great dinner for date night, but it's also family friendly as well um, because it's just this really delicious creamy sauce. Like I said, just made from egg yolks and cheese. All right, we're boiling now. So we're gonna go ahead and we are going to heavily salt our water because remember we want our pasta to be seasoned. So let's go ahead and season our pasta water. And you might notice that when you put the salt in the pasta water, it does go down for a second. It'll stop boiling for a second, but it'll come back up. You wanna make sure it just comes right back up to that rolling boil before you put your pasta in. I am using a gluten-free pasta today because my sister is gluten-free and I'm gonna be serving her today as well. So um, I am, but you can use whatever sort of pasta you want. We are using a very simple gluten-free pasta today. It's like rice and corn flour, as close to kind of traditional pasta as you can get, because that's what I like. Um, and when you do use the pasta water, you're gonna get a little bit of that starch and also some of that salt. And we're just gonna use that to thin out the sauce. If we need it, we may or may not need it. Um, but you just wanna remember when you are cooking this dish, just to reserve some of that pasta water. I'll show you a trick. Um, a lot of people have tried to make pasta carbonara and um, it hasn't worked out because they end up creating scrambled eggs. So I'll show you a, a trick to avoid creating scrambled eggs from your pasta carbonara. There's a couple of bigger pieces here. So for those of you wondering, um, this pancetta is from Aldi. Of all places, Aldi has pancetta. I know Trader Joe's has it as well. You can find it at most grocery stores. Like I said, you can use bacon as well, but there's just something about the pancetta. And I'm just moving it around a little bit so the pieces are separated so it just starts to get crispy. Uh, but pancetta, just, it makes such a difference, especially because they're like the little tiny chunks of ham. It just, it's more robust and I think it just adds tiny little pockets of flavor throughout your pasta. All right, we're rolling. Okay. So I won't lie, this isn't my favorite pasta pot. This is my mom's pasta pot. Sorry, mom, but this is not my favorite pasta pot. Um, make sure all of your pasta is submerged. If you've got a small pasta pot, you need to make an effort. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. because one of the most important things in the kitchen is that you are making sure that you're paying attention to the time if you have things that need a that need a certain time they need to be done in a certain time frame right I oftentimes have two or three timers on in the kitchen and that just comes from my days as a personal chef where I needed to keep track of things but I always recommend that you have at least a kitchen timer in your kitchen and then you also have your phone sometimes the microwave or the stove um, no shame in using timers to make sure that you're not overcooking things. So our pancetta is just cooking over here. And let me show you, so you can see the fat that's starting to render. We are going to, it's kind of hard to see, but we're going to keep about half of that fat in there. We'll take about half of it out after. Just letting it get nice and crispy. So I have it at about medium high right now. And I'm just going to crack my egg yolks over here. So like I mentioned, I have a cup of freshly grated Parmesan and then I'm gonna use three egg yolks and that is what is going to make our sauce. So I'm just gonna separate these eggs from the yolks. And these are actually really cool eggs. My friends, um, her father-in-law, her in-laws, her parents-in-law, they have um, a farm and so they brought some fresh eggs. So look at how beautiful these are. They're all different sizes. So I'm excited to see what the actual yolks look like, but you don't get much more fresh than uh, straight from the farm, right? So when you um, when you are going to go ahead and separate your egg, and I was actually a little bit nervous because these are so fresh. Sometimes fresh eggs tend to crack um, more. You wanna make sure that you are um, cracking the eggs on the actual, sorry. I'm cracking the eggs and also trying to talk at the same time. <laughs> you wanna make 
make sure you're hitting the egg on a flat surface, not on the side of your bowl. Much more likely to, you're much more likely to get yolk, uh, not yolk, to get shell everywhere if you're doing it on the side of the bowl. All right. So I'm gonna save these egg whites and we're just gonna use them for something later on. And I'm always gonna walk away to um, wipe my hands up because, or to wash my hands off and, and wipe up because we're getting crispy over here. We wanna make sure we're safe. So when you are touching anything raw, just make sure you're washing your hands. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab another bowl. I wanted to make sure that I had separate bowls. So I've got my egg yolks in here. I'm just gonna add them to a bowl. I'm gonna whisk them really well and I'm gonna add the Parmesan cheese to it. Our pinchette is almost ready. Once it gets nice and hot, it doesn't take very long at all. I also, you will frequently see me using a fork to whisk. I don't even own a whisk at home. Look at how beautiful those yolks are, you guys. Those are farm fresh yolks. Thick and creamy, so good. This is gonna be our sauce. Let me just go ahead and Check out our pancetta over here. Once most of it starts looking pretty crispy, you can go ahead and take it off. Let me try and show you a piece. It might be kind of hard to show you guys. Yeah, you can't really tell. <laughs> Once it starts looking pretty golden, which will be probably another 30 seconds, we can take it off and just we're gonna just gonna go ahead and put that on a paper towel lined pan. I'm gonna combine my cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Whoops, counter's clean. <laughs> I probably should have used a larger bowl, huh? With my egg yolks, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> and I am just going to add a tiny bit, just a tiny bit of um, pasta water to this before I add the pasta to it. Okay, my pancetta's done, I can tell because I hear it sizzling and we don't wanna burn it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move it to this paper towel lined pan. And there's quite a bit of fat in the bottom of the pan, so I'm just gonna pour half of it out into another small bowl and we're gonna leave about half of it there and we're gonna use that to cook our garlic. only need a tiny little bit of fat in the bottom of there, just a tiny bit. Just making sure we are stirring our pasta water over there, um, or stirring our pasta to make sure it doesn't stick together. Um, so something I see people do a lot with pasta and that I want to warn you against if you are using a sauce is um, I want to make sure that you are not um, rinsing your pasta. Apparently my brain's not working today, you guys. <laughs> my kids were here much later than they normally are on Thursdays. Usually they're, um, they're got a little bit earlier, but um, daddy had to do a run to the airport for one of his friends. And so I think my brain is like still in mom brain. So you don't wanna rinse your pasta. Here's why you don't wanna rinse your pasta because pasta has starch on it. And when you are putting a sauce on it, you wanna make sure that that sauce actually sticks to the pasta. And if you rinse off all of that starch, it's a lot harder for sauces to stick and that sauce will just slip right off. So um, gluten-free pasta can sometimes use a little bit of a rinse just because it does tend to get sticky. Um, but if you've got a good gluten-free pasta, if you have a good gluten-free pasta brand that you love, um, stick with it. 
And and that one, that's the one you'll kind of learn to get to know and get to know. Maybe it needs a little bit of a rinse. Maybe it doesn't need a rinse at all because every brand is a little bit different. So this is a lot of Parmesan um, and just a few egg yolks. So this is actually quite a um, quite a thick egg yolk sauce here. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of that pasta water to it. So we have about a minute left. I'm going to reserve, this is about a half of a cup of the pasta water. Got a little bit of this Parmesan here. Got about half of a cup of the pasta water. Let me grab my tablespoon. My mom rearranged her drawers, so now I'm looking for everything. <laughs> And I am just going to add about a tablespoon and whisking the whole time. I'm gonna add just a tablespoon of that pasta water to those egg yolks. It's not going to cook them. It's just gonna thin them out a little bit. And it's going to make it less of a shock to the egg yolks when we add them to the hot pasta. And it's going to be way less likely that it's gonna turn into those like scrambled eggs that we don't want it to be, right? We want this to be a really delicious sauce. We don't want scrambled eggs. Okay, apparently the pasta, it's been cooking for eight minutes because the timer is singing at me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and check on the pasta. So this is what we want it to look like, okay? We've got our egg yolks and we have our Parmesan. It's beautiful. Yes, it's thick because it has that Parmesan in there, um, but it's, it's not gonna turn into scrambled eggs. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and check on our pasta. You might not wanna to touch pasta with your hands, but I have no feeling in my fingertips anymore now that uh, I've been in the kitchen for so long. So how to tell if your pasta is done? Let me see. All right, we're close, but we're not quite there. So a couple ways to tell if your pasta is done. People will tell you to throw it against the wall. Really all you wanna do, I know this is hard to see, is you wanna split your pasta in half, and if it's still white in the center, then it's not done yet. You can taste it too. Oops. You want it to be al dente, but that's that's a little bit al dente. And al dente, for those of you who don't know, just means to the teeth, means it has a little bit of a bite. So we're gonna leave it on for about another minute. Um, we don't wanna overcook gluten-free pasta, especially, but any type of pasta, we don't wanna, we don't wanna overcook it, we want it to be al dente. Um, so as soon as that white is gone, or there's just that tiny little bit of white in the middle, that's when you know it's ready. Just giving it one last stir. We're gonna give it a second over there and this is looking beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my garlic to my pan. Now I took the pan off because it was a little bit hot and we don't wanna burn the garlic. So sometimes, sometimes you gotta move things around so that you are just being, being careful with your food. So I've got two cloves of minced garlic here. My pan is still pretty hot. This is the pancetta pan that I drained half of the fat out of. And I'm just gonna add two cloves of garlic to it. And we're just gonna lightly cook that garlic in that rest of the fat from the pancetta. And once the pasta is done, we are gonna drain it. Remember, I already reserved some of the pasta water. We're gonna drain it, and we are going to toss it with this little bit of fat. Yes, yes, it's gonna taste delicious. Um, and the garlic. And then we are going to slowly whisk in the egg yolk and Parmesan mixture. That's it. You don't need cream. You don't need any other fancy ingredients. This is all you need for pasta carbonara. And then we're gonna stir the pancetta in at the end. And we're gonna to top it with some more Parmesan, a little bit of parsley. You can do freshly, um, freshly cracked black pepper and it's gonna be done. All right, so our garlic is just very, very lightly cooking over here. There's like barely, there's nothing in the pan, which is why you can hear the scraping. Um, I'm just moving it around so that it cooks, but it doesn't overcook. And you can always use more garlic if you wanna use more garlic because you measure garlic with your heart. <laughs> okay, you can hear it sizzling just a little bit. Perfect, our pasta should be done.
Okay, perfect. Our pasta is done. Our pasta is drained. Our garlic is good to go. We have not burned it. Do not burn the garlic. It turns bitter. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my pasta that I just took off to the tiny little bit of pancetta fat that's in the bottom and the garlic. We're going to mix it around. I'm going to use some tongs. And yes, I will, I will share with you how I actually, because I've, I've had questions when I talk about carbonara, how I actually mix the carbonara in. All you need is two forks. This is 12 ounces. It was 12 ounces of dry pasta for those of you wondering. Um, this is gonna serve like four to six, depending on how hungry you are. I'm just going to fully coat the pasta with that garlic and that little bit of fat. And then this next step is really important, okay? I'm gonna do a little switcheroo over here because I don't have a ton of space in this kitchen island. So bear with me for a second. burning anything. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> All right. So my sister just got here and my sister actually speaks Italian. She took more than a semester abroad. <laughs> um, okay, so what you just saw me do was just move things around so I could take this pasta off the heat. This is important. If you are gonna make pasta carbonara at home, you want, what pot did I cook the pasta in? You need a new one. Don't get this one. Um, it's my mom's pasta pot. I don't love it. Um, it. It has like the strainer on the top, which is convenient, but I find it's hard to get all the pasta to cook evenly. Um, I recommend a, a, a large wide pot for pasta. It's a lot easier to get all of the pasta in and get it covered with the water quickly so it cooks evenly. Um, I can send you a link to my favorite one on Amazon. Okay, so we are coated in that little bit of the fat and some garlic. I've taken it off the heat. It's hot, okay? Pasta is hot, the egg yolks are not. We've taken it off the heat because we don't need to add any more heat to this. The sauce is going to cook, so the, the cheese and the egg yolks are going to cook just as I add this to the pasta. So you're gonna take two forks, okay? And I'm actually going to get a spoon as well because I want to make sure I get all of these egg yolks, beautiful farm fresh egg yolks. And we're going to slowly add in the egg yolk and Parmesan mixture and using two forks. Okay, this is gluten free pasta. So you'll see the pasta starting to um, starting to slowly fall apart, but that's okay. It just is how it is. It is what it is. So all I'm doing is tossing this pasta together slowly, slowly, slowly. And if we need to thin it out a little bit, we're going to add just a little bit of that pasta water. Okay. So you'll see the cheese. It is thick right now, right? Because we've got that freshly grated cheese in there. Um, but you'll see that cheese start to melt and it is going to create a delicious, creamy, creamy sauce. Okay. So we're just going to slowly toss this together. So you're just using two forks. You want this to turn into a creamy sauce. The reason we took it off the heat is because you don't want those egg yolks to cook too quickly. And I can see that pasta. Sorry, not the pasta, the cheese, the Parmesan starting to melt in there and it's creating this delicious creamy sauce. And yes, it is this beautiful golden color because there are those beautiful farm fresh yolks. There's a lot of pasta here. And if you wanted to use less pasta, if you're only cooking for two and you wanted to use like eight ounces of pasta, you are totally welcome. Um, to just do two egg yolks and like three quarters of a cup of cheese. Just modify. Um, oh my gosh, beautiful. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the pasta water. Just a little bit. Just to thin it out because it is pretty thick. I might have gone a little crazy on the Parmesan. Um, I measured, but 
I was packing it in there a little bit, but it's nothing wrong with uh, nothing wrong with a little extra Parmesan. All right, you guys, that's it. That's pasta carbonara. You can thin out the sauce a little bit if you would like, but the whole goal, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more of a, a close up in just a second. The goal here is that you have, and I'm gonna put it on a plate so you guys can see as well. I'm gonna show it to you and then I'm gonna add the pinch out, of course. You have a beautifully, sorry, it's, I made a little bit of a mess on the side. You have a beautifully creamy sauce made just from egg yolks and Parmesan cheese. And yes, the egg yolks are cooking, so no worries about that as you are, as you added it to the hot pasta, but you don't want those eggs to scramble. You just wanna to slowly toss it, and as you do, it's gonna create that really beautiful sauce. So now we're gonna go ahead, and like I said, if you're using gluten-free pasta, just very be very gentle with it. Um, I'm gonna add that pancetta. Remember, it's on paper towel, just so we're not adding like whole ton of extra fat. We don't want that to mess with our sauce here. And the pancetta is gonna be beautifully crispy. Whoops, I'm throwing some around. The dog will find that later. I never, I've never claimed to be a clean chef, but it's fine. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to eat this, you guys. <laughs> All right, this is it, it's beautiful. Let's go ahead and let's plate it. I'm gonna go grab a plate. And of course we need to taste it as well. I haven't tasted it yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and taste it and then we'll plate it. Mmm, that's so good. <laughs> okay, I'm serving it to other people, so. We'll use another fork. <laughs> All right, so. It's been a long time since I plated pasta, so no one judge. I don't work in high-end kitchens anymore. <laughs> in my house, the children are just very excited to eat. And uh, so they don't care what the pasta looks like. Well, we're gonna we're gonna do a little something with this pasta. We got a couple more pieces of pancetta. We got a little bit of that swirl. Catering um, used to always make me so nervous because um, actual food styling was never was never my favorite part of working in the industry. I much rather I'd much rather work with flavors. <laughs> and we've got a little bit of parmesan, not parmesan, a little bit of parsley on the top. You can use parsley or cracked pepper. I just prefer parsley. And we're gonna do a tiny little bit of Parmesan on top. Freshly grated, of course, we're using my microplane. You guys know I love. And there you have a beautiful plate of pasta carbonara. So simple, you guys. I know all of you can do this. So what I always hope to inspire all of you guys is that these dishes might look intimidating. You might see them on the menu at a restaurant and you might be like, oh, there's no way I can cook that. Or you might try it and be like, oh my gosh, this is so delicious. Egg yolks, Parmesan, salt the pasta water well, learn how to cook up some pancetta and you have a delicious pasta carbonara. Super, super simple, delicious, it's a classic. So that is our that is our pasta carbonara today. As always, I'm gonna go to, go ahead and put the recipe in my stories afterwards. You can screenshot that recipe. Next month is gonna be our last month of Cook with Chris for the summertime. So we'll be here Thursdays, two o'clock Eastern, same time, same place next month. And you guys all voted on the recipes and I will share with you guys the results of that today as well in my stories after I post the recipe. Um, but I, we are doing a green Thai curry, which is like, it's a very traditional green Thai curry, which I'm very excited about. I love the green Thai curry. We're gonna do lemon basil salmon burgers, which are one of my favorites for the summertime. We're actually using fresh salmon for those. We are going to be doing um, shrimp tacos as well, crispy shrimp tacos. And what is the last one you guys voted on? Oh, 
my favorite caprese salad with a twist. So that's what's coming up in the next few weeks. I hope you guys will come and join me. I will share with you guys. I try and um, put up a reminder on Sunday. Sometimes I forget, but I try and put a reminder of my stories up on Sunday. So you can click it and you can get reminded that I'm going to be going live here. But you can always watch these after as well. Sam said it looks so good. Oh my gosh, Sam. Well, soon enough on your way. <laughs> soon enough I can make it for you. <laughs> I hope you guys will try this. If you guys try any of my recipes, Cook with Chris or over on the blog. Otherwise, I want you guys to tag me in them. I love seeing when you guys cook my recipes and hearing how they were. Okay, friends, I am going to go ahead and log off for today, but be sure to go grab the recipe in my stories and I'm gonna go take a few bites of this. All right, friends, have a beautiful Thursday and I'll see you guys next week.